focus less on the this and more on the ability of what we can do. Join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, live on www.letgoradio.net and on Facebook Live, where I always say, if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is 2021. Time for some fun. It's that day again. It's Wednesday at 2 p.m. And it's time for My CP Does Not Define Me. I'm D to the J with the Roll Away DJ Carter, your host. We're live on www.letgoradio.net and Facebook Live. Imagine being two places at once. It actually happens. It's happening right now. So I'm going to kick off the new year with a bang. And I, well, I'm not going to stub my toe or anything. I'm just going to uh, introduce my guest. I've got a great individual. We have uh, talked several times. He is a constant watcher of my show. He's a good friend of mine. And I've been wanting to have him up here for a long time. And we finally, last week, were able to uh, discuss a schedule and get everything. Uh, actually, a couple of weeks ago, before the holidays, we were actually able to get everything together. Let me introduce my good friend, JP. Um, JP, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> Man, it is a pleasure. Uh, now, now we did a little bit of talking, but I'm going to ask this uh, the same question I always ask as everybody comes in. Again, we're live on Let Go Radio and Facebook Live. Thank everybody for being here. Please comment and let us know how you're doing in 2021. So, JP, if you would, would you just introduce yourself? Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do, and what your disability is that you have, if you would, please. Well, my name is JP. I'm originally from Alabama, uh, so I'm a Southern boy. Uh, I currently reside in Florida, um, and my disability is uh, I have a spastic diplegia. Okay. CP. All right. Now, how, how, does that, how does that affect you? Is it, is it lower extremity, upper extremity, both? Um, mostly the lower extremity from the waist down. I can use forearm crunches to get around. Uh, I have a wheelchair that I primarily use around the house to, uh, so that I have use of my hands. Uh, it does affect my fine motor skills a little bit, uh, particularly on my right side, but I am able to function. It's just those really fine, you know, uh, holding a pencil or trying to pick something up with my right hand yeah. can be a little more challenging, but I pretty much have full use of my hands, which is good. Now, you uh, are, are you left-handed predominantly, or are you right-handed? I am left-handed. Okay. Or uh, as my mom used to say, in my right mind. Mm, uh, mm, yeah, yeah. You know, that's kind of us both. I'm, I'm left-handed as well. Now, you were saying you, you, you're, a, you're a Southern boy, so you're originally from Alabama. I hear a little, just a, just a little bit of the twang there. We, we, were, we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> we both got that Southern accent just a little bit. Right. <laughs> So now, so growing up for you, you know, uh, um, talk about, you know, your, your childhood. What was your, what was your childhood like growing up with cerebral palsy? Um, lots of surgeries, uh, probably, a, a, I'd say at least 10 over my lifetime, but uh, uh, lots of surgeries. My parents were really big on pushing me mm -hmm. to be independent. So when I wanted to do things like sit around uh, in, in the wheelchair or not do anything because it hurt or what have you, my parents had none of that. They were like, you're going to get your butt up off the couch. We're going to make you do these exercises. We're going to make you work for it because you've got to be independent. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did not want me to rely on anybody but myself for as long as possible. Did it take you long to come to grips with, okay, this is how life's going to be. My parents are going to be hard on me to a point to push me to, to get where I need to go. Um, it, it, it was, especially, you know, as, as, a, as a teenage boy, and being a teenage boy was rough. And uh, having to come to terms with, uh, there were things that other people were doing that I couldn't do. Like I always wanted to go whitewater rafting. And I've never had the chance to do that. But, but that was a lot harder on me when I was younger. And, um, you know, I'd say about the time, about the time I got to college, I'd say 22, 23, I finally came to the realization, you know, 
it is what it is and i just have to try to make the best of it but don't let it control me <clears throat> so so now let's let's go back a little bit i got i got two questions that kind of spurred from what we were talking about hey kim thank you for uh for joining us josh we appreciate you joining us thank you guys for coming in so let's talk about the surgeries a little bit because because you and i have had about the same number um you know there's a there's a two-part question here for me, surgery, when I when I had surgery, it would help, but it would all would also change the way that I had to do things. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn things over again. Was that the same for you? Uh, it, it, it most definitely was. I remember uh, when the surgery I had probably back in 88, I would have been about 12 or something. Mm -hmm. I went to the Shriners and they did a they did a surgery. And prior to that surgery, I could actually, with my forearm crunches, I could kind of skip run a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and ever since that surgery, I cannot, I cannot run to save my life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so there, there were some trade-offs, but the, the trade-off was, is that it would make walking and moving easier for me as I got into the much later years. And so, uh, yeah, there, there was definitely some changes that I had to get used to, but I try to tell myself in the long run, it, it, it was worth it for my well-being. Right. So, so what were, what were some of the positive changes, uh, with, with the surgeries that you had? Uh, I was able to, to, uh, bend my, uh, my knees a little more, uh, things hurt a little less. Um, okay. able to be more flat footed when I walked instead of walking on my tippy toes. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so you had the heel cord releases. I've had heel cord. I've had adductors both twice. Mm -hmm. I think I've had the heel cords done actually four times. Uh, so I've had heel cords, adductors, and hamstrings all done at different times or all at the same time. So it's it's been interesting. Now, did they did they do all of your surgeries when you were little or, or before you were teen? No. My first recollection of surgeries, because I've had other surgeries not related to my disability, but the, the first recollections of those that were, I guess I was about six. Mm-hmm. And then I did some more when I was about 14 and then again when I was about 20. Okay. Yeah, I, I noticed, you know, and, and I've talked to, to some doctors now, and I don't know, you know, what your opinion on this is, but I want to be sure to get it. Uh, and, and, and again, guys, as, as you're tuning in, be sure to comment with us. Thank all y'all for tuning in. I can't see who you all are because I, I know we got people watching, but I want to thank all of you for, for tuning in live on Facebook and on Let Go Radio as well. Um, now again, you had the surgeries when you were, when you were six, a lot of, or some of the surgeries when you were younger, a lot of doctors are saying now they're waiting until a, a child will finish growing unless the surgery is, you know, needed mm -hmm. and, and it, and it's going to help, you know, dramatically. Do you feel, um, in, in your opinion, do you feel that they should wait until the child is done growing? Um, as far as, uh, you know, um, you know, just how do you feel about that? Um, I think it really depends on what the surgery is. I, I'm a firm believer of if you can do what you can, if you can do what you can early, then it's, it's a little less traumatizing to the child as, 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 as they get older. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I get that there are some surgeries, like if somebody has to go through a leg lengthening or, you know, they have spina bifida and they've got to get some sort of shunt. Uh, uh, yeah, it, those, those often have to do with, you know, where are they in the growth stage? Mm -hmm. So it, it really depends on the surgery in my opinion. Uh, Miss Wilson says, Hey, uh, great to see you DJ and J JP. Great seeing you both live. Kim says, yes, surgery. You know, I, I the thing that got me when I had, I, I was a, I was a crawler and I was, mm -hmm. a, you know, I could, I could shake and move when I was little boy. My, my last, my, my, Last thing that got me when I was about when I was about sixteen, I had the serial casting done where they where they straighten your legs out a little bit mm -hmm. at a time over weekly mm -hmm. periods, and I was on the floor before when I started those. And then when I got that serial cast, and I couldn't get on the floor anymore because it helped me to where I could you know straighten my legs out, but it killed me as far as mobility because I used to sit in the in the um, in the um, W sit a lot, but I. You know, the I did too. I did too. as far, 
but my mobility, man, I could, you know, jump around like a jackrabbit and roll around the floor and all that. And then when I had the serial casting done, it was, it was, you know, it's, it stunted everything. I had to be careful. I guess when I was about seven and I, cause I, I used to crawl on the floor a lot to get around and I also did the W SID. But when I was about seven, I was crawling on the floor and unbeknownst to me, I put my hand down on the carpet. I was crawling and I had a toothpick go through my hand. Uh -huh. Well, it, it turned out that that toothpick had been in somebody's mouth from a party we had had the night before, or whatever, and they had strep. Oh. So I had so I had strep direct uh, injected directly into my bloodstream when the toothpick pierced my hand, and I had to have surgery on my left hand, and they came very close to amputating it. Oh, and God. my mom, my mom begged and pleaded with them to try to save my hand, and luckily they did. But I still have the scars where the toothpick went through. Good Lord. You talk about tragedy, man. And something like that, it's it, it happens so fast. It's one second and boom, it's over. I mean, it, it, what what was that what was that experience like for you? I mean, I mean the, the support of your parents to fight for you and fight with you. Oh, my my parents while while especially during my teenage years, while my parents were kind of a pain in my butt as a teenager, they have they have always supported me and they have always pushed me to be independent and to be uh to to be the best uh man i can be um i know one time my mother uh my next door neighbor tried to sue us because because my mother would not permanently put me in a wheelchair and <laughs> wait, wait wait a minute now uh -oh. yeah <laughs> uh -oh. okay all right all right folks this is a new one to me i i, I sorry to cut you off there jay i, I you're telling me that your neighbor tried to sue you because your mother would not permanently put you in a wheelchair. Yes. All right, I got my center here. What the f was she thinking? I, I got. I, I I don't know. I mean, I mean, uh, you know. Now, granted, I I was really really young at the time, so I don't know the story verbatim, but. Supposedly, the judge just kind of looked at the lady and laughed and threw it out like, you know, the, 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 it's like the kid's not being hurt. They're not punishing the child. They're just pushing the child to be to 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 think for themselves and to to be as independent and self-functioning as possible. So, so the judge pretty much threw it out. Yeah. So a couple of comments here. Uh, geez. Uh, geez. Thank God you didn't have to go through that and and they saved your hand uh miss wilson said hold on that's so crazy and josh said wow really so so i i just want to mention something now we're, we're talking a little bit about point of view here and, and i want to kind of this brings me into my next segment how people see things and how they perceive things you know I, i've got to be honest some people just got to mind their own business because it, it yeah. and, and I understand that, that people, you know, feel sorry and they, they wonder and they think uh, people just don't understand the strength uh, of loved ones that have the best interest in what, what you as a parent knows best for their independence. And, and I love that because it's the truth and people see independence and see parents pushing their children and, and, and 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 it's and it's true we need that and i realize now that that being pushed as an individual being pushed as a person to 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 go through life um mtob mind their own business preach it miss wilson i got to tell you um, oh that's that's what that means i just learned something <laughs> yeah there, there you go hey we, we don't get those we don't get those abbreviations over in alabama trust me I, they hear us talk boy they want to deduct 100 iq points I just, <laughs> um i've got somebody very special up here uh miss jenny ricketts my my um my fourth grade aide that that helped me through school um nothing like nothing like a nosy uh, know it all neighbor, neighbor, so irritating when someone who is not going through what you are going through tries to make a call about something they have no clue about. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it's so true because, Miss Jenny, I'm so glad you're up here. I love you to death. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to have you. Thank you for coming up here. I, 
you know, and, and I and I understand where you know people want to try to do something, but but sometimes just stay away from it. Let let people live their lives and and try to see the positivity in what someone is doing. They're not always trying to. They're not always trying to make it difficult for for a child. You know, having a parent that pushes you, and and this will be my next question, JP. Talk about, you know, you you talked about your parents pushing you and getting you to that next level to be independent. Um, I can you talk about just the support of what it means to have family in your corner, but also to push you to that direction of where it's gotten you today? Well, you know, I, I think I think family is very important, especially when you, when you're uh, disabled, because you know the the one group of people that would probably understand you more than any other non-disabled individual is going to be your family, yeah. and you're hoping that your family is that one group of people that would never judge you for your disability, no matter the situation. So, it, it wasn't until I was probably in, in my mid twenties that I finally realized that what they were doing was a good thing and they only had my best interest at heart. But, uh, even now as I've gotten older, it's, it's nice to be able to, to, to talk to my parents and go, you know, Hey, this is what's going on with, with my disability. And, and this is what I'm struggling with. And just, just to get their input. Um, it, it it's to have that circle. Uh, is very important. Even if your family's still not around, it's always good to have that very, you know, that circle of friends, whether it's two, five, or 20, to have that circle of friends that support you no matter your situation or your disability. You know, I, I, I've got another another question on that, but I, I have to read this. Uh, Ms. Wilson, oh, wow, a long time, a very interesting. Yes, I agree with DJ Jenny. Uh, great seeing someone that really knows DJ to see him uh, now and how he's, uh, how he's doing with, with empowering and impacting lives. I'm going to tell you something, this, this lady, Miss Jenny, to just tell you a little bit about it. And I want to get into here, uh, JP with it as well. Um, you know, I was, I, when I was little, you know, and this kind of impacts, I was very, I want to have people do things for me, you know? And, and when I first met Jenny, man, I was, I was, I called her Miss Wyatt then. That was before she before she got married. And I I she walked in and this pretty little brown haired thing just I mean, whoo, I was like, I was 10 years old. I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh, this is perfect. You know, I, I got man, she's gonna do everything for me. And I'm gonna this is gonna be and I just played it up, boy. I mean, I'm 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 telling you what, and I just kind of melted when she walked in the room and she was you know, helping me with this and helping me with this. And my mom walked in and she goes, you did what? Uh, and then I, I kind of turned stone faced. I'm like, oh God, my mom was going to kill me. And she would help tie my shoes and she would help. Me. He can do that on his own. And mm -hmm. then it became the, the entire, um, that, that entire relationship became uh, totally different to where uh, Jenny began to, to, uh, push me in a way that she knew that I could do things for myself. And she saw that. And I was a flirt boy back in that day. I, heck, I still am a flirt. I'm married and I have to watch myself, you know, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. My wife knows who I love, you know, but I, I, oh yeah, I was, I was, a I was a young, I was a young one, boy. I, I get it done. I, I, you know, I had, I had to go after it, but, uh, you know, Lord, forgive me. Uh, but I, I just, you know, that support system that we talked about, you know, my my fourth grade year uh, really changed my life. And that was about tw when I was about 12. Now, you had said something earlier um, that you didn't realize what they were doing until you were about 20. Um, I want to ask you this. How did you come to that realization of what they were doing and you realized, Hey, my parents are trying to get me in the right direction and they're trying to help me. How did you come to that? Well, I, a lot of it, a lot of it was me coming, realizing that, Hey, I can just, it just one day I was like, I don't need, I don't need to confirm with them. Mm. I'm, I'm able to, if I need help, I'm, I'm, I know who to call, when to call, uh, and just, 
it just it really happened over time. It really wasn't like an instant, you know, instant. Oh, this is it. I understand it now. But when I go back and I look at some some of uh, people I know and some friends that need a little bit more assistance um, and and what have you and, and what directions their lives have taken, uh, I feel very blessed of both you know from the Lord and my family that I'm that I am where I am and just coming to that realization and, and being thankful for what I have and and what I've been given and and the lessons I've been taught. Wow, wow, that's. That's powerful. And, and, and to see that and to realize now that you have that opportunity uh, to to, uh, you know, talk with them openly, you know, and, and again, this one here. Yeah. After she realized you were a flirt and taking advantage of Jenny, Jenny and, and her service to help you until mom stepped in and changed your flirtation flirtation to open up to see you for who you are. Great mom mm -hmm. and divine intervention. Now, now, see, there, there's something with that, though, too. It, it's amazing because I still love Jenny to this day. I still, it, it just that, I mean, that country twang does it to me. Boy, I can't, I can't get away from it. I mean, it, you know, she's, uh, she's married and we still talk. And it's so amazing to be able to call her and go through life. And this is kind of what we're talking about. That family mm -hmm. orientation, when you realize that, uh, that someone has done something for you, and years later, it impacts your life in such mm -hmm. a way that, you know, it, it changes you to, for the better. And what you're talking about, being able to talk with your parents now about your disability um, and, and, and mm -hmm. to go through life knowing that what they did for you was a positive interaction. Thank God for the many lessons, JP, uh, to bring you to where you are today. Exactly. Well, well said, Miss Wilson. I love that. Mm -hmm. No, no. What what I, what I do have to say, and I and I want to make this very clear, is that is that the Lord has just as much to do with this as my parents, because sure. the, He has He has watched over me through all these stupid decisions that I have made in my life, uh, and He has He has had my back through the ups and downs related to my disability and everything else. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he, you know, he, Him first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then my family, but I, I know, I just know of all the stupid stuff I've done. He has got to be watching over me without question. So, you know, and, and, and you saying that, I, I love that because I, I feel the same way, you know, God has watched over me for so long and got me th through some of the, all, all of the stupid stuff that I've done, you know, and, and people, people, I don't want to say all people, but a lot of people are afraid to announce that. You know, and, and realize that that he gets you through it. I think it's it's, you know, you 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 can't put a price on that. And that it, it, it's it's so it's so awesome to to hear you say that. And and and, and with the, with the real with the realism that you know where it comes from. You know, uh, you know we have a lot of faith, and and that's something we need to show. But our faith gets tested. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, I, I love that, man. That is awesome. Um, I, I just, I, I, I'm kind of taken back because, you know, there, there's a realization here and kind of what we're getting to. Um, now you, you've come up and, and now you were saying, uh, you, you lived in Alabama for a long time. I was and, born and raised there. Mm -hmm, and, uh, you know what happened with that? We we were talking a little bit about relationship status, you know, and and all of that. Uh, so, are you are you married, single? What what's what's going on with that? Well, I I am I am currently in a relationship with a with a lovely woman, uh, and uh, they, they, they give you an idea of of the Lord putting people in your path. Uh, I was I was in a long distance relationship for fifteen years, mm -hmm. and. For the longest time, I thought her and I were on the same page, and we had talked about getting married and all the stuff that you talk about when you get to those points in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we had made the decision to uh, move to Florida uh, because, you know, w winters when you have a disability can be rough. Woo! And so, and so moving, moving to a place that it probably snows once every millennia. Uh, <laughs> So uh, at least in this part of Florida, northern part of Florida, it may actually snow. Uh, 
Yeah, they, so they, we, they shut the state down when it snows up there, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I I actually ended up taking a job uh, with the with uh, Shriners Hospital, and because uh, you know, they they did my surgery, and I now I actually work for them. Um, I ended up taking a job down here with them, thinking, okay, she's going to move down here. We're going to get married, and you know everything will be hunky dory. And that's not what happened. Mm-hmm. And I had met somebody about about back in 2014. We were just friends back when I lived in Alabama. And um, uh, after a couple years of sulking through a, a bad relationship that that, that um, ended up in not getting married her and I decided to reconnect and she has just, she has been a blessing to me tenfold. It's the, I, sometimes I, I wonder, I'm, I wonder what she sees in me, but, but she, she gives it her all my dis, she's not disabled and uh, my, my disability does not phase her at all. And she all but waits on me hand and foot. You know, you know, it, it's amazing. Let, let me, let me just comment on this too, because it's something you said, you know, you and I both, you know, as we talk, and I, and I realize a lot of things, you and I have a lot in common. I went through the 12 year long distance relationship off and on and thought I was going to get married. And you went through the 16, 15 years and you thought you were going to get married, move for, and I, you know, the whole nine yards. And, and then you meet the love of your life and it, and it, and it, and it just goes to show you, we think we know everything. We think we've got it figured out. And then the Lord kind of throws a, throws a curveball in your and you're like what mm-hmm. the world is this you know I, and it, and it, and and then we find out you know what true love is and what true love is about mm-hmm. what what does it mean to you um to have her in your life i mean as far as to to come to grips with the realization of, of what you have now and realizing how important it is well, in, in, in some respects, it, it's still somewhat of an adjustment for me because I've always been, uh, I can be sarcastic at times. I have a very dry sense of humor. Uh, and and, and uh, sometimes I can take people trying to be nice to me the wrong way. Like, oh, why, why are you being nice to me? Why do I deserve this? You know? And so sometimes I can be a little negative and I have to remind myself to not do that. Mm-hmm. And just take people's generosity for for what it is, and don't try to read anything into it. Like they they want something, or they feel sorry for me, or or what have you. And and uh, Christina uh, in particular is just she has just she's been there for me without question, not even giving it a second thought. And and I feel very blessed to to have her. Uh, she she helps me with different things. Like sometimes I have trouble putting my socks on. Uh, if, you know, if she's here, she, she insists on doing that. She will not let me do that for myself, even when I try. And I have to remind her sometimes, Hey, sweetie, I still have to be independent, you know, right. Um, right. but you know, she's always eager to help me and spend time with me and just to be part of my life. And she gives it 120%. You know, we'll, we'll talk about the sock thing in a minute because I, I, I just, I have to, uh, Jenny said this, having a strong other half is vital, disabled or, disabled or not. Marriage is hard. Mm-hmm. So finding someone that is truly there for you is key. Now watch this. Ms. Wilson said this, awesome. She don't see your disability or different ability, but she sees you for who you are. Uh, I, I, I love that. And, and, and your story with Christina, now talking about the, you know, talking about the socks. Socks mm-hmm. are from the devil. Man, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, having CP, I I'm telling you, if I could burn every sock in the nation, I would do it because putting them bad boys on is so tough. There's, there's I, only one thing worse than socks. What's light that? bulbs? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm reaching out there, Jay, but I can't get to them. <laughs> oh wow. Um, Emily puts my socks and on and helps me with my, my right side on my jeans. And Mm -hmm. it, you know, she, she sees me for, for who I am. And it's amazing now that I, but I love the one thing that you said. Sometimes you will say to Christina, Hey, remember, let me, let me, let me try. I've got to be independent. Mm -hmm. I've got to keep, I've got to keep going. And, and I love that because 
to 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 have someone in your corner, whether you're married or not, is is tough. To to have someone that sees you, number one, for for who you are truly. I I I I I get it. Yes, I can, Miss Wilson. The sock situation. Yes, can relate with Kelly. Yeah, I. You know, to I look at I look at socks as something. I just go, you know what? And the sock helpers they make nowadays, your foot's ten sizes too big to fit in the daggone thing, or or, and, or your feet your feet tense up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and Josh said, "Don't get me started on socks." So, <laughs> so the whole situation now, the sock situation has taken us by storm here, live on Facebook and Let Go Radio. But, but here's the thing. You know, you look at life right now and you you realize we've got somebody in our lives that's with us, you know, through thick and thin. Um, You know, how does it make you feel to wake up and know that she's there? I mean, it's got to be it's got to be overwhelming sometimes because going through a a 15 year relationship, my God, I mean, that that that's that's hard in, in, in itself. And it is. I mean, that 15 year relationship, I've, I've kind of moved on from that. And, and, you know, while we had some rough times, we, we, we don't, you know, we don't hate each other. It just, it just ended up not working out. But to, to you know, to, to have her there and, and sometimes uh, it's, it's when, when, when I need her, she's there. But I know we, you know, we've had discussions about, you know, me needing my man time or my man cave. Right. You know, so, so we still have some of that, but it's, it's, um, to have her there to go, you know, you know, just, just having her there is, is a blessing. It's cause you, ne- you, you, you never know how much somebody affects you in, into you until they're not there. Yeah. Then you start realizing what they actually offered or what they brought to Ooh. the relationship. Gosh, man. It's well said, brother. I, uh, I, you know, I, and 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 this is this this was hard for me. So so the question I'm about to ask you now, let me get to this. Is it okay for you? How do you feel as a man? You know, because because we men, you know, we we go we go yeah. you know, get get in there a little bit. Got got to have it. Uh, how, is it okay for you to feel the I need? You understand what I'm saying? We're we're men. We don't need nothing. We're strong. We will you know, do we, you, you get that moment of, I don't need nothing. Am I, I yeah. get it, you know? Um, um I, you know, I, I think that, yes, a lot of men that way. I think when you, when you have a long-term disability, you're humbled a little bit. Yeah. And, and, and you, you try to learn uh, when to ask for help and when, and when to be all manly mm-hmm. <laughs> and stubborn. So, uh, but having a disability humbles you a little bit to go, hey, look, I need some help. Right. And you swallow your pride. And and, and, and you have to. And and you also have to. Well, I would want people to realize that are watching this show and listening to the show. It is okay to ask for help. We get it somehow. People get it in their heads. Women, too. This This theory of independence is great. Independence is great. Doing things on your own is great. But there comes a time when the light bulb can be reached mm-hmm. and you ain't getting up on the ladder. And if you do, gravity will win. I'm going to let you know. Ask for help, guys. It's all right. To, to, to give you an example, uh, what was it Christmas Eve? Mm-hmm. My smoke detector in the bedroom started beeping because the battery was low. Oh, I hate that. And 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 I had, of course, I have no way to do it. So I had I had to call uh, uh, my stepfather on Christmas Eve, going, "Hey, I need help. Otherwise, I'm not getting any sleep because it just echoes through the entire house every thirty seconds. Beep. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. can't yeah. sleep with that. And and uh, I just had to swallow my pride and, and go, hey, look, I want to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, look, if, if I don't sleep, y'all going to see the bear in the morning. So, look, somebody either come rip this smoke detector down or 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 put, please help me put the battery in it. Now, there there are two there are two things here um, that I want to read. And, and actually, there are three. Uh, 
Jenny said this, men in general, it's okay to ask for directions to. And she <laughs> about that one. I but, have a GPS. I'm good. <laughs> all right. Kimberly said this. I am a very independent. I'm very independent as a woman. But yes, I do need help at times and I hate it. Now, this, this is what this is what we get into right here. Every every man and woman, male and female, disability or not, strong or not strong, needs someone at some point for something. Don't take it so personal when you have to ask for help. I feel that it's a big part of people's struggle in life to just ask for help even when you don't want to. Uh, she said, I have a GPS. I'm good. It's so funny. <laughs> All right, Mama Aid is Mama Aid just come up here. Hey, Miss Karen. Uh, you know, DJ, we you know, we we talk about help. One of the things that I that I've noticed uh in my experiences in asking for help or not asking for help is like when you're at the grocery store, mm -hmm. okay? Getting stuff off a shelf or getting the groceries into the car. There there has been times that people have literally seen me struggle to do something at the grocery store and they don't want to, they don't want to help. They don't ask me if I want help. They just, they see me and they ignore me. And I think, you know, part of it is society has gotten to the point to where they're afraid that if they, if they ask somebody, do you want help, that that person's going to be offended, like they can't do it themselves. Mm. And sometimes people with disability can be that way to where they get so prideful, it actually pushes other people away. But you know, I've I've seen it to where people will just just ignore you, even though it's obvious that you're struggling because they don't know how you're going to react when they ask you if you want help. And and you know, I, I I've seen it both ways, and, and and that's that's a great point to bring up. You know, in the store, I'm I, that's where I know. Look, I ain't getting to the top shelf. I am not King Kong, no. although I do have hairy arms. I am not King Kong. I am not going to get up to the top shelf. And they put everything you want now on the top shelf. I wanted some Golden Graham cereal bars. I stared at them bad boys for 10 minutes. And well, like, you, you can look at it this way. They put all the expensive uh, uh, name brand items at eye level. Well, your eye level is a little bit differently. So that's where they put the cheaper items and you can save a little bit of money. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, talking about GPS is our women's voices very well, so we rule. <laughs> well, no, she, she's right. The GPS in my car is a female voice, so she's got a point there. Miss mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, Winnie said this, I feel in some cases some just don't know how to ask for help, and then you have some that ask, but maybe not in the right manner. Now, mm -hmm. and here's the mm -hmm. thing, on a serious note, there is, there is a time and place for everything. And we as people, and I'm not saying disabled, I'm not saying differently able, I'm saying people, because that's what we are. Without the title of disabled or disabled or not, we are still people. We have to realize how we come across. You ain't got to jump at everything. If you're struggling, let somebody help you. And if if you see them, and, and, and we have pushed it, and I've done it too, because when I'm trying to do something, if I need help, I will ask for it. Let me try first. Let me try first. And then if I need help, I, I will ask for it. And we've got to, hey, Michael, how are you? Hey, Nikki, how are you? Thank you for joining us. You know, we, we, we've got to look at it and we've got to be humble. You know, you were talking about that humbleness, JP. We've got to be humble enough to realize that we're human. Okay. And, and the human race has a heart, has a soul, and has a mind. And everybody's going to need help somewhere along the line. Miss Jenny said this. See, I'm the opposite. I follow people around almost stockish <laughs> so that I can help them. It, I just I just happen to be there. You, you know, but but again, Miss Jenny, that's in your nature because that's, a, mm -hmm. that's who you are. You are a person that you, you see the need, but you're going to. You know now. I think you know now because you've worked with disabled people in the in the in the, in the past. Hint, hint. Uh, that you've learned, you know, yourself to to be the helper when they ask for it or if they need it. Uh, and and, and Miss Karen said this. 
uh, an act of kindness can be allowing someone to help you. So true. That and, and and but that's for yourself as well. People need to realize that it's not wrong when you really need the help because it's there. Um. I, oh wow. I didn't know this. Um, go go ahead, JP. Go no, ahead. no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, but at the same time, you have to learn to not take it personal when people ask you if you need help. And at the same time, you don't need to get so mad, but you have to remember at the same time, it may be a time when you need help and no one is around and you get mad because no one is asking. You can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. That's so true. You cannot sure. have your cake and eat it too. Although I like chocolate and strawberry, I'm not going to get them both because I'm not going to weigh 600, uh, 600 pounds. I, I, <laughs> Miss Jenny said, <laughs> I help to their mama says not to. <laughs> Woo! Oh, God, do I love this show. Oh, man. <laughs> I, so, so let, let's let's move a little bit. What um JP, what would you you say um your, your biggest accomplishment thus far would be? Um that 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 one I've I've been able to survive this long on this earth thanks to the Lord's blessing and my family. Uh, I've been able to to accomplish most of what I set out to do out of high school i've i've gone to college i've i've gotten a job i've owned a house um um you know i i have a car and i have friends and you know i i i've i've been very blessed and i've accomplished a, a lot mm -hmm. and uh and uh that's just just realizing that that everything that I, that's been afforded me a, as a blessing that 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 so far there's been some ups and downs, but but life life overall has has been pretty good to me. Right, right. So so looking at the JP now, looking at the JP of 2021, and what you've gone through, and the life that you've learned, and the lessons that you've learned. Looking at your younger self and going through that, wanting to sit in the chair because you hurt. You know, your parents pushing you in the directions they push you in. What would you say to your younger self if you had an opportunity to talk to him? Um, and 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 I would say this to anybody younger with a disability, not just not just myself, is that uh, uh, first and foremost, do not give up. Okay, because one one of the things that I have noticed is that I, I've had to push a little harder than maybe the average person. Yeah. I've having to prove myself a little bit more. I've had to show that that my disability doesn't define me, mm. and 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 there are people out there that will be stubborn and automatically make assumptions about what you can and can't do, and and whether or not the type of education you can have, what you can and can't own because of your disability. So I would tell my younger self and anybody, just don't give up. And realize that yes, you're gonna have to push, and you're gonna have to push harder than most. But if you push and you don't give up, and you have dreams, if you work hard enough, you can accomplish them. Brother, that, that, that's well said. Uh, I, I, you you are inside my brain uh, because I tell you why. Do why I say I would I would answer that that question the same way a lot of the times. Um, let me ask you this: you know, 2021, 20, 2020 has been a rough year. You know, I, I'm thankful for the year that I've had and, and, and you know, I, I've been able to reconnect with some people, be, you know, virtual and all of that. What, uh, what, what did you struggle with most in 2020? And then in 2021, what are your goals for 2021? Uh, 2020, uh, as, as we all have the social aspect. Uh, don't get me wrong. I am by no means a social butterfly. I'll take a good night at home over going out to a bar or whatever ha have you. But uh, what social interaction I did have, uh, I missed it. I've missed it. I've been blessed that I'm actually able to work from home. 
during the pandemic. So, uh, you know, my, my, my job is pretty secure. So I've been able to, to continue to provide for myself. Uh, as far as, um, tw you know, 2021, um, just uh, one, try to exercise more, lose, lose a little weight like we all want to do after the holidays. Uh, I, I, I know uh, my girlfriend has some goals that she wants to accomplish. And uh, and uh, we're we're talking about that and 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 uh, working uh, working our way through that and uh, just just take whatever comes and try to make the best of a situation. Right, and uh, and I appreciate that. I think that's well said. I, I've got uh, two more questions for you. We got about fifteen minutes uh, left in the show. This one is a little bit harder, and I saved this one for last because you know you you mentioned. Christina and, and, you know, what it's like to have her there. But you also mentioned, you know, going through the long relationship and getting over that and having to go through when, when you, when you go through the long relationship and you think you're going to get married and you, you, you know, it doesn't happen. And then you meet someone who you find that you believe is the, the true love of your life. And you realize what it's like to have her does marriage enter your brain again are you afraid? And, and if it doesn't, what do you do to maybe think about it? I won't say necessarily afraid as it is maybe being a little bit more cautious and moving things uh, at, a, at, a, at a certain pace. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in that 15 year relationship, I guess it was about year eight that I started talking about, hey, let's let's get married. Let's, you know, let's do this and do that. And I thought she was on the same page. But uh, um, just just learning from those lessons about what what worked what didn't work and and you know you still have to learn how to communicate with people because every person is different so some of the things that i learned with my past relationship i can't use with the new one because it's a completely different person with a different personality right right but some of the experiences you can you can take those with you and, and learn from those and hopefully help the new relationship grow more than the old one did now but you also would you well i don't want to put words in your mouth or anything but would you also say that you have a newfound trust yeah 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 New, newfound trust in in that you know especially when when there is as caring as christina is there has to be that level of of trust because you have to confide in in that person more personable things than you normally would especially when it relates to your disability. So that level of trust, you know, does have to be there. And especially when, like I say, when they, when there is as caring as she is towards me, it makes that trust a lot more easy or forthcoming. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, and, and it's on both. Um, now, this is the first time that I've asked uh, this question on the show, but I want to read this from Jenny real quick. Don't let one relationship have influenced on an, on another. Mm -hmm. Each person is different. So give each their own opportunity. Well said. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think that's mm -hmm. very true. Miss Jenny rock on. That's always awesome. Um, I, I, you know, I, I want to, I want to, um, um, re relationships, compromising and communication. Awesome. 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 Two of the biggest things that you need communication is very true. Um, I want to ask this because I said, this is, as I said, this is the first time I've asked this question live on the show. How did you find out about my CP does not define me? How did you get into it? Um, I know you said Christina had watched it a couple times and she was like, eh, and then, then it kind of grew on her. Talk right. a little bit about, about that. Uh, if, I, if I recall, uh, it actually ended up through, I discovered CP Sunrise mm -hmm. on Facebook. And that kind of naturally with, uh, you, you know, your relationship there kind of naturally pointed me in, in your direction. Uh, occasionally, I will go look up uh, resources. Uh, many, 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 many years ago, I actually ran a, uh, a website for uh, adults with cerebral palsy called CP Connection. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it's no longer online now, but, you know, I... I, I Every once in a while, I'll go and I'll just look up resources just to see what's new because mm -hmm. I've noticed a lot of times when you're an adult with cerebral palsy, 
it's very hard to find information because everything is geared towards kids. That's that's very true. Go ahead. That's you're yeah. right on the right track because I'm about to hit you with another one in a minute. Go ahead, JP. No, and so it's just so every once in a while I'll go through the websites, I'll see what's new out there, mm -hmm. um, and and see if there's anything new. You know, I've had people ask me, is 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 there a cure for your CP? And I was like, well, depends on what your definition of cure is. Wow. You know, it's, it's, is, is there going to be one surgery, snap your fingers and all of a sudden everything's, you know, back to normal? No, I don't think that's going to happen, but you know, you, they, you know, I'm like, they do try to give you ways to improve your life so that your disability doesn't feel like it's getting in the way. Yeah. 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 I understand that. Now, how, how did, how did uh, Christina come about watching the show? Uh, I think. <laughs> You're going to laugh. I think what it was is, is somehow, and I did not know Facebook did this, uh, I watch you through Facebook stream. And apparently when I watch you, it then notifies all my friends that I am watching your video live. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she'll pop on and I'll see where it'll, it'll pop up on my end. It says, you know, Christina's watching. And then also, you know, and, and I was like, well, why didn't you say anything? Like, well, well, what, what is she gonna say? <laughs> you know, uh, awesome, awesome. Well, I appreciate your support. Now, um, you said you had a website, uh, uh, what you said, Disability Connection. Uh, it, you, it used to be called uh, CP Connection. Well, let me let me say this, and this is this is from my mentor, and I, and I'm going to just just this nugget of information. Um, that right there is needed. Uh, you mentioned there's not a lot of, of resources for adults because a lot of people focus on children. And then once they hit a certain age, they kind of, you know, dissipate away from it like it doesn't mm -hmm. exist. Uh, CP Connection is a good mm -hmm. idea. It was a good idea then. Mm -hmm. And it's a good idea now. So not saying that you want to do this or not saying right. that you should. But right. I will say, once you dip your spoon in mashed potatoes and gravy and you take a bite, maybe you want to warm them up in the microwave or make some fresh ones and try one more again. Um, I, I actually, I still own all the domain names. I never, I never mm -hmm. dropped them. So I still own the domains. I just, it's. You know, you, you you go through seasons in your life where uh, responsibilities have to shift a little bit. Um, one of the challenges that I ended up facing uh, with with running something like that was um, I had a BBS and email board in the system, and we would be there so that people could answer questions. And oftentimes, even though the site was geared towards individuals with cerebral palsy. You'd have a lot of distraught younger parents finding out for the first time that their children had CP and they had questions right. and people would do their best to answer those questions. But, you know, at some point it got to be a little much because it was the goal was to focus on on the adults with CP. Right. And sometimes the parents would come in and just kind of overwhelm everybody. Right, because, because they're new and they don't know what to do, and they're kind of freaking out. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ben Ben Oxley said this. Thank you, Ben, for this coming. It's funny that you say something about coverage and uh, and being all you would see, because I just got off the phone uh, interview for something I have uh, I have coming out and, and coming out, and that's exactly what I told them. We need to do more for adults with Medicaid. Uh, because there's not enough coverage and knowledge about uh, waivers and things like that when it comes to CP being older. Um, and, and JP, I'm gonna say this, and if it, and this is coming from Miss Wilson too. You know, she she puts a spark in me. Uh, revise that website and take a look at it, man, because it's needed. And I and you are a very 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 strong person. Uh, this show has been phenomenal. And, and I've got to say this because if I don't, um, you know, maybe it's something, maybe it's not. But when the Lord tells me to do something, I do it. I, I realize that that you've gone through a lot in your life, and we both have. But you know, there's there's always there's always a piece of something that people do.
And some people put that piece of pie, they take that piece of pie, they put it in the fridge, they save it for later. Some people, they eat it. Some people, they eat half of it and throw it away. With a website, you revise that thing. You give it a new background. You come up with with, with new ideas and make it, make it pop. You know, you can do anything because you can draw more people in with what you have because it's another resource that's not out there. It used to be, and, and you know, you know, and they're like, man, that CP Connection is a strong site. That JP's got it going. Oh, I got to, I got to, you know, check in with them. So you can do anything that you want just to put that nugget in there. I'm not trying to force you to go do it. Uh, and, 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 and like I said, the, 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 you know, this may be the Lord intervening uh, because uh, my, 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 uh, HTML and internet skills have greatly improved over the last, you know, many, many years. And maybe that's, you know, maybe this is his way of telling me, uh, you know, let's revisit that JP and, and, and see what we can do. So uh, I, w- I will take it very seriously and, 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 and see what I can do. Fortunately, my skills have greatly improved since the last I, I had that site up and uh, maybe something can come of it. Well, I mean, and, and we hope that happens. And if you, I, I, hey, I'm a listening ear. I've, I've worked with websites as well. I'm connected with a lot of people. You know, bounce it off me. Let's 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 work on it. Uh, how can we reach you socially through social media, JP? The the the, the best way to reach me is I, I don't have a lot of social media accounts. I tend to be somewhat of a of a private person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can always reach me on uh, Facebook. It. Uh, uh, JP Jackson, uh, you know, I'm, it's, as far as I know, I'm like the only the fifth JP Jackson in all of Facebook. Okay. Uh, you can also reach me, uh, at email. You can call me at, uh, uh, Jesse Paul J J E S S E P A U L J at gmail.com. Man, that's awesome. You know, an Instagram would be a good idea too. You get an Instagram for, you know, what you link the website back up because everybody's on Instagram now and it's a way to, to just pop it out there. Um, you know, snapshots and things like that of the equipment that you're looking at, different things like that. Um, guys, I want to thank everybody for tuning into the show today. Uh, real quick, you can reach me and I'm just going to give you real fast a rundown here. My CP does not define me on Instagram. My CP does not define me on min- on uh, uh, Twitter at, at Minion Sports. Uh, DJ Carter on Facebook. YouTube, uh, Worth the Wait, Cooking with DJ Carter, Chairmaster Games, and My CP Does Not Define Me. Uh, I am available every Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Let Go Radio and Facebook Live. You can also email me at carterdj85 at gmail.com. And on my new blog, it's uh, carterdj85 at wix.com slash mysite1. I always say... Uh, If you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. This is D to the J with a roll away, thanking my guest JP for being here. Uh, Having you has been a great, 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 great opportunity. We're going to have you again. Maybe we can get Christina up here too and make it a, make it a family affair of her. Uh, But uh, we we loved having you. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here. I do want to spend a, send a special shout out to uh, Miss Jenny Ricketts for coming on the show today. I haven't seen you in so long. I love you to death. Miss Winnie, you're always awesome. Uh, ben, Nikki, all my people from coming up here. Uh, Michael, thank, thank everybody so much. I could not do it without the fans. You guys share, share, share. Please share the show. Get it out there. If you want a topic, if you want to uh, discuss a topic, or if you want to be a guest on the show, please email me at the sports minion radio show at yahoo.com or my CP does not define me at yahoo.com. I always say, if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. This is D to the J with the roll away. Say, we'll see you next week. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for this week's episode of My CP Does Not Define Me. But don't worry, you can catch us again next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on www.letgoradio.net and on Facebook and YouTube at My CP Does Not Define Me. Remember, I'm your host, D to the J with the roll away. And if you can't be good, be bad, but be good at it. We'll see you next week. 
Uh, Miss Jenny, real quick before we go off the air, you had asked, how do I share? If you go to my Facebook page, DJ Carter, and you go down uh, to the show that will be on Facebook Live once I once this post, you just click the share button or you can copy the link and paste it to your page and share it that way. But you can do it at any time you wish. Take care and have a great one, everybody.